I was wondering what the the, uh, the genesis of International Flash Day was. Actually. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty fun. I think pretty funny and totally random. So International Clash Day was started on February 7th, 2013. It actually happened live on the air. I was playing a Clash song and a listener wrote in and said, you should play more Clash songs. They sound so good, one's not enough. So I kept playing Clash song after Clash song and people started responding. And you know, that's not really what stations are supposed to do is, you know, you could look at it as rebellious or like doing our own thing. And I think in the spirit of the Clash, the way it even started by a community member writing in and us responding a sort of just sums up the spirit of the Clash. And that's the organic way International Clash Day started. So eventually KXB moved into a, a new home, a bigger home. And I think with that came a bigger celebration of the Clash. So every year it's kind of expanded more and more. It started with the local government declaring it International Clash Day. Our county declared International Clash Day. Our city and even the governor of Washington, Jay Inslee, declared it uh, International Clash Day in the state of Washington. Uh, we had other cities, other governments start declaring an International Clash Day everywhere from San Francisco to the nation's capital to places in Europe. So International Clash Day has truly become international. It is memorialized through radio programming around 110 different radio stations around the world. We talked to DJs all over the world, including China, to this DJ who was the very first, and I think only DJ, to play the Clash on the air in China. And when he was told not to, he told them uh, the Clash were anti-capitalists, and so we got the yes on playing the Clash. Last year we took another step getting International Clash Day out into the world when our collaborator Albina Cabrera actually contacted 10 different countries around Latin America who also then got involved in International Clash Day. For the International Clash Day, we connected with more than 10 uh, countries from all Iberoamerica in nine Latin cities, like Buenos Aires, Argentina, who celebrate the International Clash Day at the Niceto Bar and at the Strummer Bar, with um, panels, live music, and obviously all the, the Clash stories. And then somewhere, at some time, someone said in the last year, you know it'd be great, London Calling celebrated its yeah. 40th anniversary. We should all go to London. And then everyone in the room, of course, is like, ah, oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. We'll never be able to do that. And then, and, and now we're standing in London. We had that clash value of championing community in mind when we were thinking about where we wanted to broadcast from for International Clash Day, which ended up being the Hackney Wick neighborhood and Studio 92 at 94. And the neighborhood itself oozed art and creativity. There were murals everywhere. And you could just feel this vibrancy and this creativity. You could also feel that that was changing. Cranes were starting to impose themselves on the neighborhood. Uh, and while we were there, we interviewed musicians both from the neighborhood and musicians playing our broadcast about the uh, impact of the new construction going on in Hackney Wick. 20 years ago, this was this is an industrial zone. Uh, there was warehouse parties and illegal raves going on and it was a quite a vibrant scene. And then the Olympics came along and that's, that's changed things again. But at the same time here, on this side of the canal in Hackney Wick, there's a, an artistic community that's, that's grown up. And this was an industrial area. The last 15 years, uh, they've deregulated the building control so, and the land value has shot up. And basically, they sell all these buildings to people around the world but they don't go and live in them. And we've got some of that, and it, and it all for us, it helps us write a new punky song. You know, we use the, put ourselves in a crazy costume and a silly situation. And then what's the, what what fun can we have? Infiltrate the uh, opposition. Or the, or the enemy <laughs> as well, yeah. yeah. Just to see how they their minds work. Yeah. And then just it's like the fact that Engler's ridiculous yeah. chat around the concert. Yeah. We're getting together and collaborating on so many different projects. One of them coming up is um, a music project called Common Songbook, all about uniting all the different components of the area who don't usually mix and see what it would feel like to make music together that represented a far more radical political um, idea and, and opinion of, of all the changes that are happening and actually celebrate our identity through song. On one hand, I really feel for artists and bands, mm. like how hard it is, like, yeah. it's, you know, it's the grind. Yeah, but the passion keeps you going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's what keeps me going anyway. I heard you like started a radio station. Yes, yeah, I started like a, a radio station, stroke coffee shop, stroke bar, stroke live venue spot, soon to be cinema space. Also, I wanted to do things alongside my own music. Still in music in terms of still fueling my passion of music, but in a sense, um, championing new music and an alternative experimental stuff. Uh, as things move forward, the Mayor of London has uh, uh, put pressure to designate this area as a creative uh, uh, industry zone and to support uh, those cultural uh, uses that are happening and hopefully allow those, those uses to stay at the same time as uh, a new community is built around it. For KEXP's International Clash Day live remote broadcast from London, we selected artists that we felt carried forward the messages that the Clash supported. Anti-hate, anti-fear, anti-racism. One of the bands that played our live remote broadcast was Shopping, and they bring forward the awareness of people of color in music, and that was something that really resonated with us. <laughs> uh, I want to dedicate this to all the people of color in the room. This is a song about whenever you feel uh, underrepresented or underappreciated in whatever it is you do. You push a limit, you cross a line You name a price, and no, it's not fine But would you notice the passing time? Yeah, would you notice when I'm suddenly gone? Yeah. We always like to uh, dedicate that song to all of the people of colour in the room and I guess actually on reflection I was like, should have said, in the world <laughs> watching because it wasn't just that room. Um, but yeah, we also like to dedicate that song to female identified people, queer people, because it's a song about reclaiming your um, art and like our history and our, um, our narrative, like talking about the queerness of disco and uh, the, the blackness of punk and things that have gone unwritten in a larger narrative. And I think we need to, we need to talk about it. We need to question, the song is called Suddenly Gone because it's about what would happen if we all just stopped. All, all of the, the brown people and the queers that make music, what if we just stopped doing it? There would be, it would be very bland, <laughs> I think, the musical You'd have sphere. none of the groundbreaking stuff, yeah, like the yeah. clash and dub influence exactly, punk and yeah, that yeah. mix of like people of colour, um, people of colour making music that then influence like so many of these amazing, influential, uh, but yeah, that narrative is not often talked about, the people that inspired the clash, the slits, where that music really comes from. We curated an eclectic and exciting lineup that not only highlighted issues that The Clash spoke about, but championed the diversity of sounds that are represented in London. Being in London, that's kind of the main factor that brings that whole mix together. Because from that, you get all the variety all the different influences and all the different cultures and all the different backgrounds and from the fact that we've all kind of grown up listening to different kinds of music like growing up I listened to a lot of South African music a lot of Western music as well so that whole mixture is kind of what formed my musical background and somewhat identity as well so. and, and also I think if, if one is actually listening to the world around us then to you absorb, you absorb like a sponge, you yeah, absorb yeah, a lot of things around you yeah. as well. Maybe the, that's what the Clash were also it? picking up. Right? The Clash were pro-immigration, pro-love, pro-people. When we were in London, idols were on our broadcast, and they carry this pro-immigration value forward with their song, Danny Nadelko. It was actually named after Danny Nadelko from the band Heavy Lungs, and the song is advocating for the support and equitable treatment of immigrants. I had a chance to meet up with Joe and Danny to talk about this song. The other thing you inspired, you talk about immigrants. You talk about mm -hmm. just beautiful immigrants, and, and you mention immigrants in the song, and you use Danny to tell that story. Mm -hmm. uh, that part of it for you is, what did that mean to you? Um, and I completely agree with the message, just like how this country is like incredible because, because of the people come over. And yeah. I was welcomed as well, particularly in Bristol with Joe and all my friends, because they're speaking those locals where I've met half of our friends. I used to work in this pub with Golden Lion, with Dev, he used to be like my boss actually. Yeah. That's how I met you. Terrible boss. Yeah, absolutely man. Just, uh, <laughs> that's a different episode. 
The Clash were all about the message. The message was more important than musical proficiency to the band. And they stood for a lot of things. They were anti-fascist, anti-racist, pro-immigration. They were pro-creativity, really open-minded themselves and encouraged their audience to be open-minded as well. You know, London Calling as an album is a great example. You know, they incorporated reggae and ska and jazz and R&B and rock. Uh, and when, when they were doing their series of shows in New York City, they had fallen in love with New York City and the music scene. Um, they uh, had a series of different opening acts for these shows at Bonds in 1981, including Grandmaster Flash who they loved, who they wanted to introduce to their audience, and their audience booed Grandmaster Flash, much to the disappointment of Joe and the band. In fact, Joe got on stage and implored his audience to be tolerant, to be open-minded, to be open to hearing new sounds. And uh, that open-mindedness and introducing people to, to new music is a core value of KEXP. And it's something that we apply every day to our programming and certainly when we think about curating an event like International Clash Day. Music is a platform that brings us all together. We went to London to celebrate The Clash. We celebrated it through all these other artists from around the world. The audience, the artists, KEXP were all coming together and by the end of that broadcast you could really feel the spirit of The Clash and what we were doing. It is the seventh annual International Clash Day holiday we made up on KEXP seven years ago today. It, we are so happy to be here in London. You guys have been so good to us this week. Thank you for hosting us. Unfortunately, my country has trouble letting people in. I don't know about yours. I've heard we each have issues. And I'm so sorry to the rest of the world that we're not welcoming to everybody who needs a home. And uh, KEXP is always a place for musicians, creativity, inclusion. And uh, we hope to continue that no matter who's in charge of our countries. Uh, but we're all here because we love music and we love just hearing the messages of musicians and getting lost in the music. And uh, we've done that all week. And, uh, and I'm sorry that we jailed this next band in America when they tried to get on my show. <laughs> but I am so proud to welcome them all the way from Italy. This is Soviet Soviet, give it up. International Clash Day has become a unifier for social justice and equity. Every year we see more and more people get behind these messages and participate, and that evolution will continue as long as these humanitarian issues persist. Anyone who wants to get involved can participate. Go to internationalclashday.com to see a whole array of events and see the radio stations that are involved, KEXP included.